What's up, YouTube? Today we're talking to Karen Wickery, one of Silicon Valley's best super connectors who you don't even know of. We're gonna talk about her book on how to advance your career, even if you're an introvert, what to do at an event, and how to use social media to build that network. Stay tuned. <laughs> Karen, thank you so much for joining us today. And I'd love for you to introduce yourself to our audience and tell them how you became such a super networker. So, uh, hi everybody, my name's Karen Wickery. Uh, I'm a longtime resident of San Francisco, a uh, longtime, uh, I don't know, inhabitant of Silicon Valley. And uh, I uh, didn't set out to be a big networker. I am an introvert by nature. Um, I do a lot of my connecting with people online as I say, the, by, behind the safety of my screen. Um, and I, you know, over over the years, people would turn to me and say, hey, you seem to know everybody, or can you make an introduction for me, or, you know, uh, that kind of thing. And part of that reason, and part of the reason I wrote the book is, um, I've been in a very fluid job market. The Bay Area uh, and tech are very fluid, and it's the norm that people move around and change jobs. Uh, I think the thing I've done is simply keep in touch with people as we've all moved into different roles and different jobs. And that turns out to be uh, really a, uh, a, um, a a wonderful way to have a network simply by keeping it sort of an active touch with people and, and catching up occasionally with them. Um, and that's And that's the basis of the book. I think for a lot of people, they also need to understand that Silicon Valley, that area, and the way the job market is working is a little bit ahead of the curve. All the data and research is now pointing that people are not going to be staying in their jobs for very long and their and their careers are going to be changing. And so this idea and these skills are, as we've been saying all through the month, is for everybody. Everyone needs to understand these. This is going to, uh, you know, the, the risk that it takes being involved in the job market uh, is is solely going to be relying how comfortable you are with your network. No, that's exactly right. And it, I, I should say, Silicon Valley has had this kind of uh, career fluidity, shall we say, for a long mm -hmm. time. But it is not alone in that. Uh, everywhere I go, everything I read tells me, and people are probably already experiencing this, mm -hmm. nobody stays in a job for 20, 30 years. Uh, they may not even stay in the same field. And, and in addition, we have, you know, geographical, uh, you know, moves over that ha can happen over time um, and just different, you know, new roles and new um, kinds of jobs and careers are opening up fairly frequently now. So for all of these reasons, it just pays to make connections as you go along and then, as I say, stay in touch with them over time because this much bigger network it's bigger than your friends and family you you do know lots of people it's just a matter of feeling comfortable in having some little bit of social uh lubrication shall we say with people so that when you do want to be in touch about a specific new opportunity uh introduction that a uh, new lead something like that it's it's okay to be in touch because essentially we're all doing it with each other all the time. It's very much a give and get situation as opposed to a single transaction where you're desperate and the other person is someone you are afraid to ask. We don't want, th that's, that's why people hate networking. Yeah, and I think for a lot of our audience who's introverted like you, introverted like me, the idea that you could be a master networker and still be introverted is a little counterintuitive. You know, what know. are some of the misconceptions that go along with introversion and networking? Well, part of it is this idea that networking is somehow you're in a hotel ballroom with a, you know, <laughs> 200 strangers and you have to somehow like come home with a hundred business cards or something like that. Right. That's a, a networking event. Right. That's, and I would say, don't do that if you don't want to do that. Right. <laughs> if you have to go to a conference, that's a different thing, uh, which we can talk about. But, you know, for the most part, um, building a network is is really simply paying attention to who you enjoy, who you've enjoyed working with, who you have fond memories of, who you uh, like as a team member now. And you just 
stay in touch intermittently with them. And, and uh, I find that people are happy to help each other, happy and flattered, to be honest, to be called on to say, uh, could I introduce my friend to you because they have this question about your company or what, whatever it is. Uh, people want to help each other. So it's really just not coming on cold with, I'm desperate, I have a need, I'm not asking anything about you, I just want my thing, right? That's that's the image that networking has that's so bad. You know, something you said there, and it, all these different components for all these different companies all end up at some point being collaborative. And what you exactly. mentioning about how important it was of remembering the people that you worked really well with and that you got along with so that you, know, you can talk to them when, in these other times when trying to find something or transitioning. How important it is, AJ and I both grew up in families where our dad worked on assembly lines. So you're just, you're focused, you're just dealing with your stuff, you're <laughs> handling your day yep. and your area. And, and you may talk to the guys at the lunchroom, but that's about it. Yeah. And, and that and, and certainly, is why some of those guys I think could develop a mentality that would allow them to last 30 years in a factory. But in today's climate, that collaborative, cooperative spirit yeah. uh, and, and skills are going to need to be cultivated and developed in order for you to be a, a, a good employee and somebody that people want to work with and collaborate with. I, I was going to say, that's actually... Uh, you know, in, in some companies, uh, people will say, we don't want just the superstar, right? Mm -hmm. We need people who can collaborate with other people. So uh, in a way that it, it, soft skills are kind of more important than ever. And and the reason you may remember someone and, and if somebody asks down the line, and by the way, sometimes this is a back channel. Someone will text me or send me a note and just say, hey, do you know so-and-so? Because you know, we're looking at them for some role or mm -hmm. we're just co considering whether we should reach out or something like that. And that is, uh, you know, a kind of a thing that was not done before. I'm not giving a referral. The person may not know about this connection I have with somebody else. And the basis of my answer is essentially a great, you know, a great person, lots of energy, loves to be helpful. I'm not even talking about the skills for the job. Right. I'm just saying, this is based on my experience with this person. Now I might've worked with them and I could speak to that, but people are asking like, is this a good person? Mm -hmm. You know, is this someone we want to have on our team or that we want to have, you know, around us? And that's where this, this idea of being both collaborative and helpful. And I should add, this does not mean you have to be like out in the front. Mm -hmm. You know, it does not mean you have to like lead you know, team cheers, you know, or whatever, whatever <laughs> right. is the most hate, awful thing you can think of. It is not that it's, I mean, I've just always, I mean, I've been this way by nature, I think, but I want to kind of get to know the other people and what they're doing. And I want to be helpful if I can. I, I think most people are kind of like that. And well, so that's, that's a key skill now, as you say. And think about how important that is to the office culture and the productivity exactly. if we have one person who's uh, poisoning the well so to speak well, right. now we have a full office of people who don't want to go in who's whose days are now turning into drudgery when they're supposed to be happy, productive workers who are doing the things that they love to be doing if they're if they're doing their careers. And that person has now contaminated those those areas. And that's so right. Every person on that team is incredibly important. We certainly yeah. know what that looks like in sports. So and I think the, the key distinction here that you made is so important is like these are just one to one little interactions here. You know, I think yes, exactly. People get so focused on I need to meet everyone in the room and I have to have this vast network and that vast network will come over time if you focus on great one on one interactions. That, that's exactly right. So there's a quote I found that I have been using. It's in it's in my book and it's, it's basically this um, networking is more like farming than it is like hunting. Yeah. And I would add, if you're not a farmer, you might think of it as gardening, right? <laughs> so gardening or farming they're continuous a little bit every day it, it it sometimes you're weeding sometimes you're planting you know right. uh sometimes you're just letting it all winter over <laughs> right. but that's an ongoing thing whereas let's say hunting is kind of a one transaction <laughs> right you know like you go in for the kill you kill or you know 
it's not good. Right. <laughs> it's not it's not like this. So what you're saying is exactly right. That the idea that, you know, suddenly a network springs up I would say you know more people than you think you know. But I'd also say it is a matter of cultivation over time to feel like, well, who can I really trust with, you know, uh, like a confidential thing I've got going on at work or, a, you know, a problematic boss or something new I'm thinking about. And you're going to pull among the people in your network, not necessarily that, that smaller group of friends and family. Right. We made that distinction earlier this month, too. And I think the important thing with all of this is to understand no matter where you are in your career, great conversations can start building that network. And I That's think right. a lot of people get so focused on, well, I don't have anything to add. I just got out of college. This is my first job. How can I add what someone like Karen adds to a network? It's like, well, actually just being helpful, being a great listener, being supportive are all things that you don't need a college degree for. You don't need a vast amount of experience for. But those little one-on-one -on -one interactions, they parlay throughout your career into that network that you hope to That's have. That's right. And I would also add, I, I've talked to um, groups of uh, uh, college students and grad students both, and they've gotten that very question. You know, I don't have anything. I'm, I'm not offering anything. And I think, you know what? You're offering your curiosity and your interest. Uh, you may be asking really sharp questions. And someone's going to remember that they may act right away, but but in any case, that's a gift you're giving to that other person who's you know the supposed expert. Um, you may you may surprise yourself, and and hoping the other person is open to that conversation, they may be surprised too. I'd also add to that youthful exuberance. Like we <laughs> all companies could use a healthy shot of excitement in the arm and fresh blood, and I know what that's like for AJ and I, we've been doing this for 13 years. When some of the young kids uh, come to help out or intern or, or work with us, uh, we're excited because they're excited to get in the door and it fires yeah. us up and it reminds us about, you know, what it is special that we've been able to create and, and to see their faces get so excited, it, it, it only has a, a desired effect on us. Yeah, I would say, and actually, I think it's it, it seems like it might be an age thing and I get you because I also get um, energized by, you know, curious, sharp young people. But in a way, it's not about age. There, there's a book that has been very popular in Silicon Valley for a few years now called Growth Mindset yeah. by Carol Dweck. Right. So this anybody can have a growth mindset. I mean, this is this is not about age. It is sort of like, are you open and curious to new ideas and new people and and uh, you know new new thinking, uh, or do you have a fixed mindset, right? And so that's that's really uh, the key, and that's why I think the right kind of like good authentic connecting with other people is a, is a mark of. Uh, of an open mind, of a, of a growth mindset. And do you think there are some strengths that introverts bring to networking that maybe extroverts don't have? I do, uh, actually. A, a, one of the key ones we've mentioned a little bit in passing has to do with listening. So even as a, as a kid, without, I, without any labels on it, I remember I would just make a game. You know, someone would say to me, how are you? What's new with you? And I'd say, not so fast, I think, not so fast. You know, you're, I'm gonna make you talk first. You're gonna tell me what's going on with you. And then I gauge in that few minutes, what do I wanna share and how much? Now that's just me, maybe that's some kind of self-protection thing, I don't know. But the process is, no, I'm listening to you. I wanna listen to you, I wanna hear you first. And I, I would say introverts typically do not wanna be out front, as I mentioned, and so the idea of let me let me ask you the questions and and hear from you that has a, a good effect in a different way which is that person feels listened to and heard and flattered somewhat in that process and you get more information in order to figure out how much you want to reveal and also which way maybe the conversation goes right. based on that i think that's a fantastic skill for making connections and how to help that person right? yeah a lot of exactly. times in these situations, they're going to volunteer information that, oh, I didn't realize they were into this, or I didn't realize they were traveling here. I've been to a great restaurant there. You know, these That's are right. all little bits of information that we have tucked away. And if we give someone else the spotlight, 
we can now offer up some value that, that we didn't even go into the interaction thinking we had to give. Exactly, exactly right. And when it comes to listening, obviously mm -hmm. I think uh, a lot of us like to think we're good listeners, <laughs> <laughs> like to think, oh, I, I caught everything, but it's easy to get distracted, be thinking about uh, things elsewhere. What have you done to hone your listening skills as a networker? You know, I'm not sure it was a conscious thing so much, but I know, and we've all been here, we, we get caught out when we're not really listening, but we're waiting for our turn to talk. Yeah. I, I've, I mean, that's happened to me. And so then I think, okay, I'm, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be like that. You know, so let me kind of double down and just zero in here on what you're saying. And it, it doesn't take, now you have to have the conditions for a good conversation. If it's a noisy coffee bar and, you know, you can't really hear that well. Maybe that's not the place to have that sort of get to know you kind of conversation. But somewhere along the line, you want to have it where you say, I'm, I'm here for you. I really want to hear from you and I want to know about you, you know, what's going on. It could be a, a concentrated period of time, but it, it needs to be, I'm, I'm really, I'm all here. Right. Uh, so occasionally I have to remind myself, I'm all here. Uh, and, and we all know that unpleasant feeling when, you know, you're not really listening and then someone asks you a question and you have to kind of, uh, uh, yeah, well, I think, uh, you know, you kind of <laughs> right. have to bluff through. That's not good. No, no that, that's not going to advance your cause. <laughs> Certainly not grow your network. Yeah. And obviously during your career, the advance in technology and these tools we now have to our advantage, you mentioned at the top of the interview that, you know, you do a lot of networking behind the screen now and yeah. you know, 20, 30 years ago, that was impossible. Right. And utilizing these tools, I know Johnny and I rag on social media a bit because it, it does suck away your attention and a lot of times it, it works against you and creates some depression, but there are also great tools for staying connected and allowing this network to grow like that garden. And yes. How do you use these tools in, in your life to manage your network? Well, I would say, I mean, and I hope this resonates for people, um, you know, uh, it's old fashioned in a certain way, but uh, email um, is kind of the only kind of interoperable network we all share. So in terms of being introduced to someone, for example, or following up with someone who you're not connected to uh, on LinkedIn or, or Twitter or Facebook, um, that's about as easy as it gets. You just send a note. The, the person doesn't have to answer it in real time. You can explain what you're looking for, what your question is, or can we make a date to get together in person, something like that. Um, so that that has a continuing place in, in the in in the process. But I would also say now, because we actually know what we, we know of, we generally know more people than any time in history, just because of working with people and the people we meet at, you know, along the way. So having uh, LinkedIn obviously was designed for sort of professional and career networking. And it works, I think, fine. And it has some guardrails and people seem to understand how to use it. Um, it's, it's handy. So when you meet someone at a conference, the most common thing is either can I send you an email or can we connect on LinkedIn? That's great because then you can kind of start that. But then after you've met, this is when keeping in touch matters most. Then it's, are we both on Twitter and we follow each other on Twitter? Are we both on LinkedIn, et cetera, Instagram, whatever it is. Then that could be a channel with that person if that's something you both tacitly agreed to. Then it's just, hey, I thought of you yesterday when I saw the news about your company or your team or what the pop culture reference, whatever it is. It's sort of like, I, I know you like that. I know you're in that. I know you, you did that. Just want to say great you know and just hey that doesn't require uh a, a response or much of a response it's not a request for help it's really just hey i i'm thinking of you essentially and so uh it's never been easier to do that and do that on a regular basis with a wide variety of people maybe your work colleagues former work colleagues whatever it is that's how I keep in touch with people is all those all those ways. And it's it's often that I'm like going through I'm I'm big on Twitter. I mean I'm on Twitter all the time. So I'm seeing things and I'm kind of passing them along. 
with a direct message to this one or that one and just saying, did you see this? Do you believe this? Or, you know, oh my God, you know, and I mean, I don't have to do anything else. That's a sort of moment of a touch point that someone might send me an emoji back. Like we're in touch. It's, it's when we need to be actually in touch in, you know, real time, we've, we've had an encounter. It's not like we're, we're we've been out of touch. We've been in touch and right. now we're going to be more in touch. So that's, that's how those tools kind of make it easy. You have to be comfortable using them, of course, and you have to use the ones you and your uh, contact are comfortable using. Um, you don't want to make people sign up for a new account. With somebody. <laughs> right. I'll see you on TikTok, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we, we all find our ways through this, and it, it makes it very easy then to just have a, that kind of light touch with people. And this, you call this the loose touch habit. Yeah. This is something that you're doing on a daily basis. This is part of your routine to, yeah. to manage that garden, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. And not the same people every day. It's, it's right. more, you know, uh, and, and by the way, you know, we're also living in an age because we are connected through, even if it's only LinkedIn or, you know, past email or whatever it is, it's really okay to kind of drop in out of the blue and just say, hey, I've been thinking about you or we haven't, I mean, I talk to people or I'm in touch with people or people reach out to me. We might not have even seen each other for five years or worked together for 10 years, but it kind of doesn't matter because there's that sense of we're all out there doing our thing. You know, we're all, <laughs> we're all in the ether somewhere. And so uh, it, assuming there's some degree of affection and fondness between people, even if it was, a, just a professional relationship suddenly to just say hey i've been thinking about you because this you know because now i'm interested in your line of work now i'm i you know the thing that we used to talk about it's so much more true now and i really i'd love to talk to you about it or catch up with you or i see you're at a certain company i'm interested in it it's there's like no harm no foul with sort of coming back into consciousness with someone assuming you've had you know, there's some there's some past touch points. Yeah, and I think that the beauty of listening online is that people are offering up on their LinkedIn. They're writing articles. They're posting stuff. The things that they're interested in, they're walking billboards. You can see That's right. exactly what they're interested in. So if they wrote a Medium post about something and you read a news article that's related to that topic, yeah, that loose touch that's right. is valuable to them. Oh, okay, he read my Medium. Oh, great, he was thinking of me. Right, and even... You know, the link, LinkedIn will say like so and so you're connected to like has a has a new job, right? Even that's great. I would say don't just rely on the LinkedIn canned language, right? right to send your congratulations. Uh, and I I sometimes will just send a note, and I'll just say awesome, good for you. But sometimes I'll also, if I know the person somewhat well, I might not say it on LinkedIn, but I might send an email and just say, hey, I saw the news. That's great. I really love to hear what's going on with you or what you think about it. Um, and they know you've seen that news because they posted it. Right. right. So it's again, a little bit flattering, but also like, Oh, you're aware of what's happening. Yeah. And that's we, a That's a sign of interest. We talk about that here is the same thing. And for me, I, I like to revert to the method of communication that we've been engaged in previously. So some of the times it's texting, it's like, I see something yep. on LinkedIn and I'll text him. Hey, yep. congratulations. Yep. Um, you know, I, I, same thing with Facebook birthdays and all of that. Like, obviously everyone is posting the same thing. They see that on LinkedIn. It's nice <laughs> to have that little extra personal yeah. touch, uh, catch something on Instagram, then text or even phone call on those important exactly. moments. And, and these little things you can do habitually, not the same yeah. people every day. And that's right. how you're pruning that, that garden. Now, that's right. You talk about this place, the third place. Johnny and I love this concept. We talk with all of our students about it here, how important it is to have that place outside of home and outside of work where you can express yourself, you could be part of the community and engage yeah. in it. And it's interesting now because online, these platforms have created that third place for a lot of us. That's right. Or a bunch of third places, right? right? Because <laughs> there are fan communities that, you know, I, I have, no part of, but I know they exist. And I know they're a third place for, you know, or even esports or Twitch or things like that can also serve that purpose. Um, but I would also say even the larger, like I say, I'm, I'm big on Twitter. So I know uh, when I, I mean, I look at Twitter to see what are we all talking about now? Like what, 
what's on our minds collectively, right? And I'll see, and I'll, you know, and I, I am sure I say things, I'll tweet things that then other people I know will also, a, a little subset of us is, is exchanging, but that's, that's where we do it. Right. You know, uh, yeah, it's a very interesting phenomenon. It's important for those of us who don't understand what this idea is to identify your own third place where you can feel comfortable sharing. And, and we've built a little online community on Facebook for fans of the show at our challenge. And yep. on there, we have people from all over the world who are interested in growing their social skills, personal development. And, you know, maybe their friends and family aren't interested in it. So they right. congregate online, they post some videos, they're connecting with each other. And now they're even meeting in person because That's they right. found this third place. And I think the internet has sort of provided so many opportunities to find your own third place. You're really doing yourself mm -hmm. a disservice if you're not engaging in these little communities and yeah. creating opportunities socially online outside of, you know, where you are at work and where you are at home, which a lot that's of us right. revert to. Yep, that is, that's absolutely right. And by the way, you don't just need one third place, right? <laughs> right. I mean, I think we're used to this idea now that um, there's an incredible community of people who are, for example, cancer patients. Right, and they're sharing their experiences and clinical trials and all that stuff. That's fantastic because that didn't used to happen. Right, right. At the early days of AOL, they had chat rooms. Right, <laughs> and one of the big categories for chat rooms from those days was the gay and lesbian community, uh, who'd also been active in Usenet groups. But right. it's like these kind of places. Um, you you meet people through uh, either either forced or lifestyle interest groups uh that's some forced by saying like uh an illness for example uh or uh, even grief uh you know all of these things are kinds of third places that reflect a bunch of things in our lives and i i, I think it's fantastic that they all exist and obviously with these platforms there's a lot of concern around your online brand and not putting too much right. online and of yeah. course we now know that recruiters are less likely to, to place you in a job and point you in the right direction if they can't find you online. So your online yeah. brand matters. But for those of us who feel a little overwhelmed with all these platforms and are concerned about our privacy, what are some of the tips that you have to make sure that you're developing a good online brand that's going to help you build your network and help you professionally, uh, but not maybe oversharing and creating right. a, a position that a company wouldn't want to hire you? Well, I mean, for this purpose, if, if you do nothing else, I do think LinkedIn has value for a couple of reasons. One is, as you say, I, I mean, recruiters live there and it's not just for jobs. It's also a sort of, uh, I think for a lot of us, it's a kind of de facto directory. If you say to me, do you know so-and-so? I immediately am going to look them up on LinkedIn. And do I know them? Do I have some connection to them? Because so many people are on there. So I would say if, if your interest is basically professional development, do have a profile on LinkedIn, have a photo. Um, even if you've been in the same job, like take a little time to describe different elements of the job. Um, and I talk a lot about the, the thing they call a summary, which is at the top of your kind of chron chronology. That's where you can kind of paint a bigger picture of, you know, uh, what you really want to do, what your aspiration is, or what your kind of the, the total package, you know, right. what, what you're known for. And the reason that's valuable is, again, for these all these kinds of connections, even if you love your job, it, uh, people want people who are might uh, speak or be a panelist or write an article or be a board member or all that kind of stuff. But in addition, just sort of being part of that community of having some expertise about something that someone else might turn to. So I'd say that LinkedIn is a minimum. And then from there, it's really kind of your personal style. But these things don't all have to hook together in a unified brand. I was, I was saying to someone uh, earlier today, you know, my Instagram is really all like kind of architectural details when I travel. I mean, I like looking at old buildings and I like taking pictures of little parts of those buildings. It's really mostly that. It's not connected to anything. You know, it doesn't have any bearing on things. Now, it's it's safe if someone finds it, they're not gonna see this crazy side of me that's, uh, <laughs> and so I guess I have thought about it right. a little bit, but uh, I would say, you know, be cognizant always of what you're posting and where, because certainly uh, it will get found and looked at unless you have, you know, some, um, 
alias uh, setup that you that you can use. Um, but really, I mean, we we sometimes forget it really is our choice what what we post. I know parents who post a lot of their kid stuff on Instagram, for example, and I know others who do not do that, or they don't say ever their kids' names, right? Right, or maybe show their faces, but you know, it it's sort of people have to figure this out for themselves. I think at a minimum, it's important to have something up on these platforms, and I, I think. It is important to look at it from the lens of if a recruiter was staring at this, if my potential yeah. boss was staring at this yeah. and there were two candidates in the room and it came down to my social media, do I want to be known yeah. as the person who was partying in Mykonos or who was running around? Right. <laughs> you know, those sorts of things probably yeah. want to stay off there because these tools are being utilized. You can't deny that yeah. these are part yeah. of the job search now and it's important to craft that. Yeah. And with all of these tools that we talked about online, of course, they've helped networking they've helped us stay in touch with each other but of course when it comes to meeting in person especially going to these conferences going to these events where you're a little introverted you know you're going to be forced to it's meet a, a lot of people, people and yeah. and you may not also feel like you're that far along in your career yet and you want to talk to the speakers you want to make an impact what is your advice there uh, specifically on conferences because i know we got a lot of questions from our audience right and so i think a couple things one is you know, remember, you you really don't want to meet everybody, and you're not going to meet everybody. So let's just not have that super high bar there. If it's a smaller workshop, you know, there you may have a, a more comfort level with uh, a little bit of small talk with people. But I would say a couple things. One is, you're not going to do your whole networking transaction at the conference, right? You're going to make some initial contact that's kind of friendly and kind of interesting for five, 10 minutes, and then you follow up after. So you might be waiting in line together for coffee. Uh, you might be waiting for a speaker and you're sitting next to each other. The small talk there should be a little bit, um, should be related to the conference, the event, uh, and try not to ask yes, no questions. To basically, you know, uh, how did you, how did you find yourself wanting to come to this conference? Um, what are you hoping to get out of it? Are you, is there a speaker you're looking forward to uh, today? Is this the, a field you're in? You know, if you can read a badge uh, easily, not awkwardly, that's <laughs> great because that gives you a little more intel to go on. Uh, but it's basically, you, you want to draw them out a little bit and, oh, you know, I'm interested in, oh, I know about your company because they've been doing, you know, something I'm interested in could we follow up could i follow up with you after could we exchange contact info or, or may i you know link to you or whatever whatever is uh, appropriate in that setting and then do follow up you know wait a day or two and then say i'm just glad we met uh here's something i've been reading or here's a thing i wrote or you know whatever it is i'd like to talk to you more about it or just stay in touch about it you've made that contact up yeah and i think there are certainly strategic areas too to to help those of us who are introverts get into those conversations. You know, I, I I go to a lot of conferences where, you know, the quiet people tend to sit all the way in the back row and they're removed right. from even opportunities to talk. And just standing in line next to the speaker, you're going to be right. inundated yeah. with people who are waiting to talk to the speaker, yeah. to introduce themselves, and it's a great opportunity to have a quick conversation. Ask That's them, right. you know, what they want to share with the speaker. That's a, a trick that I've learned uh, from one of my mentors is being by the speaker has that halo effect too. It's yeah. like, oh, maybe That's AJ right. knows the speaker, even yeah. if you don't. Same with where the refreshments are or where the badges are handed out, right? When yes. people are first That's coming right. in, they're going to be a little nervous. They're looking around, putting their badge on. Who do I know here? And these are where the conversation is happening. That's right. And That's I, right. I also love the tip that you gave that it's important to – even if you're an introvert and, and you're overwhelmed by this, to give yourself some time to recharge too. You know, oh, absolutely. A lot of times we we go to these events, we're like, okay, I, I have to hit it so hard and I have to meet everyone. And, and when you're worn out, other people can know that. They're gonna see you're not listening, you're not in as, as engaged, and it's gonna harm your network yeah. if you're forcing yeah. it. Yeah, that's right. I mean, there's no, um, uh, there's no advantage to just sort of you know, going to the to the nth degree to the last mile, when you're really spent. There are times I know I've kind of I've done enough here. I or I need to take a walk outside for a minute if it's a multi-day 
thing or I'm going to sit out one session. I would say one other thing though about the break areas and the common areas. If you're going to, if, if your goal really is to sort of meet some new people or make some specific connections, keep your face out of your phone during those breaks so that you look like I'm open to conversations mm -hmm. around me. I'm making eye contact. People legitimately have a need to, you know, check their email and whatnot. That's fine. But, you know, don't do that the whole time uh, so that, you know, you come away saying, you know, no, I didn't meet anybody. Well, no one's I'm not going to bother somebody with their faces in their phone. Yeah. And a lot of us yeah. use it as a, a self comforting safety. For behavior. Sure. It's just like, For Oh, sure. I'm not talking to anyone. I have to grab out my phone and do something, but we don't realize yeah. that you're basically sending a signal to the rest of the room. Don't bother that person. They're, That's they're right. engaged in something. So being yeah. open to conversation is great advice. Now you mentioned something that we talked a lot about this month, which is the follow up. And mm -hmm. you know, yeah. as someone who goes to a lot of events, I find that this is where 90 plus percent of people screw it up. You have a great conversation with them. They're like, oh, I'm going to reach out. I'm going to follow up. And you think something's going to happen and then they don't follow up. Yeah. And that's the crucial part in all of this. It's great if you exchange LinkedIn's. It's great if you got a yeah. little bit of FaceTime. But if you're not following up and doing those loose touch moments and making sure that the other person knows, hey, I'm here to be helpful and supportive. Well, you're not really networking. Yeah, so, no, that's exactly right. And the follow up is where. That's, you know, it, it just like it takes more than one conversation to make a new friend. You know, I mean, it's sort of like it has to be a little ongoing. And so uh, if there's a reason to say, you know, like, oh, you're going to be at that thing next month. I'm going to be there, too. Or, you know, did you know about this? This one? I'm going to send you a note because I know about another event like this. And let's follow up about that. That's the way that, you know, along with offers to help uh in, in a kind of general sense it, it really is all about that follow-up because otherwise it just oh yeah i'm not i'm not really in touch with anybody uh and and i'm the one who says well i am in touch with them because i'm having these little intermittent uh you know moments of being of being connected so i can tell you where they're working now i just know because I've, this is what i do online right but it happens not in the moment at a at a conference and now I would, I'd love to know, uh, at this point with your reputation, I'm sure there are a lot of people who are trying to get in your inbox, trying to get on your LinkedIn. <laughs> what are the things that, that people do, strangers do that just annoy you when they're trying to network with you so that our audience can avoid these things? <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, well, one is the obvious, the sort of presumptive sell. And frankly, I think this happens most often on LinkedIn, uh, where, you know, there are there are people who have services to sell and they want to be a coach or they want to be an agent or they want to what it, whatever it is. So they have no connection with you. And they, they write basically through the, the mail function that, you know, you can, you can reach somebody you're not connected to. And it'll be like, you know, you, you don't know what my business is or what I'm interested <laughs> in right. and you're just sending this. So that's just a cold call. Right. Yep. So that's, that's not good. I would say it doesn't happen to me super often. I, um, yeah. I, I was just, you know, mentioning this and I was laughing because we just got one on Instagram yesterday. And it, it was, and the first line was, oh, I see you're burning up the podcast as well. So they're saying, oh, I know, we know you podcast. And the next one is, do you guys ever have guests? <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's, uh, it's like, nice yeah. try. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you an interesting one I've gotten out twice. So because of this book, I, I got recently, this was email, I believe, uh, to my website account. And it was uh, basically a PR firm that does PR for authors. Okay, that's legit. I could see somebody, somebody did a little homework. Mm -hmm. It was a canned note, but I thought, you know, that's okay. But then I look at their website and it is... This company is so behind the time and so they're not they're not linked on social they're not i mean listen maybe they do great work but i couldn't find their clients i couldn't find you know their own presence online uh they had a, like circa 2000 website so i didn't even bother and i got the same can note a second time and i'm sort of tempted to write back and say you know here's some 
here's a critique, but then I think, I, I don't know if I want to get into a dialogue about it. <laughs> but, but it is, that's essentially a cold call too. And I would say to people who maybe are in that business, like you better have your, your best game on, you know, when you're, when you're doing that kind of pitch, maybe you do reach people that way, but uh, you know, people are in the know, I think you're going to, you know, look a little deeper than your, than your pitch lip. Right. Pitch note. The other thing I'd add uh, on LinkedIn in particular is if you want to be connected to someone, say us something about why. Don't just use the LinkedIn message, right? Which is just, I'd like to be connected to your network or whatever it is. Tell me why. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe I would say yes to somebody I knew nothing about and had no connection to, but I need to know a little more than just, you know, somebody is someone playing a numbers game? I don't know. So I, as a result, I don't act on you know, a lot of requests that come in that are just kind of random that I can't, I can't see what the connection is. I don't, dec I don't uh, decline them. I just they kind of sit in purgatory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good way to put it. And you, you talk about the importance of the double opt-in and, and when making yeah. introductions, how important it is to get the other person's consent. Can you walk yeah. our audience through that? Cause I think that's another big no, no that people are doing. Yeah, I think, if you, if you think of yourself as a recipient of one of these kind of, I didn't opt in for this notes, that's kind of a surprise. And you, even if it's a friend of yours, you're like, well, what's the connection here? Or like, I'm super busy right now. I can't do this. Or, you, you know, you don't want someone promising something for you. So I always, 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 somebody will meet with me often, they're new to town or they, you know, they have a specific question. And I'll get excited when I talk to them and I'll, I'll make note of three or four people maybe and I'll say, listen, I'm going to write to these people. I'd like a little bit from you, like a, a little paragraph about specifically what you're doing or what you're interested in. Send me that. I'm going to send that to each of these people with a little note from me about how we met and that I, you know, I think you're interesting. I think this is a good question if you don't mind. Only when they say yes, this person I'm asking the favor of do i then say okay and then i put i send the next note to the two of them introducing them and saying you know hey, my contact has kindly agreed to talk to you about this take it away but you know enjoy right being respectful with other people's time yeah. and, and you hit the nail on the head when someone's making promises on your behalf yeah, it, it puts like, you in an awkward position because now yeah. you have to say no which makes mm -hmm. you look bad to some exactly. people and or the flip yeah. side you're forced to do something that you, you wouldn't have done in yeah. the first place even, I mean, I do have friends who will say, listen, anyone you want to introduce to me, it's fine. Go right ahead. I still will ask because it might be, sure. maybe they're jammed for a month with a deadline, you know, and they, they just can't, they would like to, but they can't deal right now or whatever it is. I still want to kind of clear, you know, say, hey, you won't hear from this person for a month. Yeah. Context that, is key, right? Context uh, is key. Giving yeah. people who are busy, especially as we talked to start, how fluid things are. It's like, yeah, you met this person at a conference a year ago. They could be working at a different company now, mm -hmm. doing something completely different. They didn't have time to update their LinkedIn. And if, right. if you're just forwarding them, hey, I found this person, deal with it. Yeah. You're, you're actually harming your network. And I think a lot of people yeah. don't realize that. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, think of, put yourself in that position and I bet you won't want to do it anymore. <laughs> yeah. We love to give our listeners a challenge at the end of each episode so they can start applying exactly what they've learned from the show. Do you have a challenge that you'd like to share with our audience to help them grow their network? Yeah, I would say uh, make a short list of three to five people you're not in touch with now, uh, you'd like to know better, you used to work with, whatever it is, but part of it is you like you have a good sense of them, right? Um, and reach out to them in some fashion how, whatever your connection uh, mechanism may be, whatever channels you use, just to say, hey, I've been thinking about you and I would love to catch up when it's convenient. If these are local people, you can make a coffee date. Uh, if you know them better, maybe it can be a meal, but you know, I always keep it light initially with, uh, with coffee because that could be 20 minutes. All right. <laughs> um, but anyway, you know, try that. And it's like you send out the outreach to three to five people Maybe you do three a week. Maybe you do three every two weeks. You, you're planting, you're ongoing, and then some will say yes, some will say yes for next month. Mm -hmm. But keep doing that every every week at whatever your comfort level is. And then 
over time, you're going to be caught up with more people. And those people are part of your network. And I just wanted to add to that as well. I know when that happens on my end, when people reach out to me and say, hey, I, I haven't heard from you in a while. I've been thinking about you. I want to catch up. It, allow, it, it makes me feel good. Yeah, so, you exactly. know, bright people say with all this technology, we tend to feel more and more isolated. So when people actually reach out, reach through out. That and contact is like, ah, people do care. People are thinking about it. <laughs> No, exactly. It, 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 it is a nice feeling and, you know, maybe they want to catch up with you, but, you know, you took the initiative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and yeah. it's a net positive, even if they're busy, that yeah. warm feeling about you, the fact that you were thinking about them, it's cumulative, it compounds over time. And everything that we talked about here, the more you can create these habits and, and we've even talked about creating space on your calendar. Instead of yeah. farting around on social media, create space on calendar to, to actually use it to your advantage. Use the tools like we talked about today. Thank you so much for joining us. The book actually drops today. We're so excited. Where can our audience find more about this fantastic book? So my website does have book information. It's, it's just my name, KarenWickery.com, K-A-R-E-N-W-I-C-K-R-E. -E. Uh, and I'm also on Twitter at uh, KVOX, K-V-O-X. Thank you so much for joining us. We love these tips and we love that an introvert like us yep. has actually cracked the code to networking. <laughs> Same here. God, God forbid we should ever meet in person. I but know. This has been great. <laughs> well, you're going to be getting a LinkedIn connection from me. One of those generic right on. ones. I, I, can take, I can take that. Now, come on, write a note. Write a note. <laughs> I know. Thank you for the tips. It was awesome having you. Thank you. Oh, it's great to be here. Thanks a lot, you guys. But I feel alive.